tomorrow at 5 a.m. Excuse yep. me, 5.45. I'm going to the death garage. Oh, my God. What is, that sounds awesome. What is that? <laughs> also known as Blaine Barber's garage. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so he's going to put you through a workout? Yes. So I like joined a gym, and I've been texting him about it. And he's like, hey, I know you pay for a gym now, but if you want to come to my garage, you can come anytime. Cool. I'm glad that I started paying for a gym before you invited me <laughs> to your garage. <laughs> I think this is an awful idea. I think it's the worst idea you've ever had. To be yep. honest. No, <laughs> honest. no. You guys don't gonna... know me that well. It's no. no, I've had worse ideas. No, no. Well, yeah, probably not the worst idea you've ever had, but it ranks up there fitness wise. I think you got, I think there's a little bit of jealousy, but there's also a little bit of your jealousy. I can you promise you commit to it. <laughs> You're like, I can promise you something's happening that you don't want to do. I can promise you that Blaine, Scott Stallings, all those garages, no chance. I want any part of that. I'm not jealous of that at all. I told him I had to get, I had to like work my way up to it. So I've been doing a little little treadmill action trying to get my, (laughs) trying to get my lung capacity up. Well, I'm going to give it a go. I've That's been on the rowing machine twice to... in the last three weeks, and now I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it whenever you uh, whenever you posted the, the picture of you on the rowing machine. Blaine reposted it and said, "Pull it till you fall over." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You're like you're like. How does this thing work? That's amazing. I tagged Scott Stallings too, and he didn't respond. What's up, Scott? Speaking of he Scott, didn't. I think I think Scott's playing this week. Yeah. Hey, he said he, he said this was his first tournament. Did he not say the American Express? I think he did. I texted the American him. Express this week. I thought it was fun. I will I te- say he is he is commenting on some of the Instagram posts. I'm kind of liking it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's he's a big fan, big fan. Now yeah, the American Express is the twenty twentieth through the twenty third. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. We're going to talk about the uh, the Sony electric finish. Um, yeah. Talk a little bit about the video we dropped, and um, just see where see where the night takes us. How's that sound? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Is that good? I like that. I have something. I you said you had something yeah, you wanted to talk. I want to like kind of talk about. Yeah. You want to get off your like chest? something needs. Yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, it's going to be kind of intense, and I'm going to kind of call uh, myself out, but I also think that I represent a really large demographic. So I'm going to call out the entire demographic with me being the representative. Yeah. Does it have anything to do with that Christmas tree that's still up behind? (laughs) (laughs) All right, let's do the pause so we can do the intro. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. There you go. All right. Y'all ready to go? It's episode 125 and here we go. What's up, everybody? (laughs) We're back again. It's it's Tuesday, episode one hundred and twenty five of the Dad Bod Golf Pod. Always oh, stroking. We're proud members of the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. We took MLK Day off. We're back today. You're still going to get three shows this week, and we are ready to rock and freaking roll. It's Kyle, Ben, Nate. We've been off too long. We're we got energy pin up. We're ready to go, fellas. Whoop whoop. How's it feeling? How are you feeling? I'm good. Electric. Electric. Ready to see where the night leads. Absolutely. And also not too late, though, because I'm death garaging tomorrow. Death garaging tomorrow. Absolutely. So we'll make sure that we get in and out. A lot of bang so, for your buck. So, Kyle, before yes. you get into this too deep, um, the dad bods were out in the wild. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at Kroger. Uh, Nate's at Kroger. Uh, I get a text. I guess he saw my he saw my vehicle or something. I get a text. I'm I'm, I'm sitting in Kroger. I'm trying to look at my phone to get my list, and it pops up. Nate, Nate, pass. What aisle are you on? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like he's seen me, and so I'm like I'm next to the cheese. Well, he thought I meant like the cheese separate thing that just does like cheese and olives only. So poor Nate went over there, I guess, and stood by himself for like five minutes. <laughs> kind of a while, just like waiting. You know, like you're waiting for your buddy to meet you outside a restaurant or something. That was me in the cheese section. Of I'm, you got I'm, punked? Did you think I'm you got broke. Punked? I'm in the other cheese section. I'm in like the Velveeta. Craft singles. And, yeah, yeah, you're, the craft yeah, you're in the craft singles. singles. I'm in the like Parmesan got, that's still yeah. in the block section. He, he yeah. forgets, Kylie. <laughs> you and I you and I have kids, so we're in the single section. We're mm. in like the, the – the, the, I was um, in the charcuterie section. Yeah, <laughs> Nate's, Nate's 
Nate's a little bougie. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, he's he a is. Little Nate's bougie. bougie. So he says, <laughs> well, have you already left? And I said, yep, man, headed to the beef. And uh, I was like, I, I know where that is. There's only one beef. Yeah, there's only one beef. And uh, by the way, what is up with not being able to find chicken at the grocery store? Chicken is, is scarce. Yeah. Hey, let that? me tell you something. Are... All the chicken legs you can want, though. There's chicken legs for <laughs> chicken legs. Chicken breasts, breast, though? Nope. nope. Nowhere to chicken, be found. Chicken thighs, chicken breasts, nope. you can forget it. And I've noticed one thing. There must be an abundance of shrimp coming out of the Gulf because you can get any kind of shrimp known oh, yeah. to man in oh, yeah. the uh, in the section. But anyway, uh, but then I gave Nate, as I started to leave, I saw he and Kat down one. I, I gave him a little hootie hoo from the door. Dude, nice. it was <laughs> powerful. Like, I, I was love... halfway down an aisle, and there was women way in between. They were both, yeah. Like, I gave, I gave him, I gave him, I gave him, I gave him the, there. I gave him the granddad whistle. My granddad had taught me how to whistle, like where you can, yeah, where it can go for like a few hundred yards. Yeah, yeah. So Nate, easily, and immediately, that's the funny thing. Nate does. He's over there looking. Pops up. He perked up. You he know was, what? He's like salute. Yeah, you know sorry. what I despise? For, what? friendship outside of three i hate to, i hate two man friendship i feel left <laughs> out pisses me off i'm just not gonna you lie should have been, you should have been at kroger <laughs> that's not our fault i don't shop at kroger i'm a public I know. Try, yeah you're I'm a public guy. guy you're a bougie public. Trust me, you're not nate, a public guy nate nate you were just at kroger you're not a public guy you I'm, worked at Publix, but you were at kroger nate kroger is well outside of the one mile radius from your apartment what is going on <laughs> Well, we went to church, and then we went to Waffle House. Okay, got it. She Okay, there's nothing better than finishing up church. It's a good sermon. You're feeling really good. And then I turn to my wife, and she says, do you want to go to Waffle House for lunch? <laughs> I say, will you marry me again? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get married again. <laughs> love it, love it. Guys, this episode and every episode is brought to you yes. by betonline.ag, the number one sports betting website in the history of ever. Uh, literally look it up, Guinness Book of World Records, world's best betting website. You'll find it somewhere on like page 120, something like that. Uh, there is a welcome bonus. You can sign up today on your first deposit and get a 50% bonus. So you give them 100 bucks, they give you $50 back. Coupon code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V. Uh, you got, uh, call, uh, not college, NFL playoffs, a lot of basketball, still time to get it in. A lot of casino games, very fun. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Hey, I may have given them a hundred dollars this weekend. I didn't. They didn't match it because I lost it. So that's what was going on there. But that may or may not have happened. I hear you. All righty. Well, how about blackjack. that? Well, how blackjack. About you, bet the, you bet on the Cowboys? Black, yeah. That, no, it was a blackjack. Yeah. No, you. As soon as you said that you were picking the Cowboys, I was like, nope, going the other direction. I'm a fan. <laughs> I have to. I still, I still went the other direction. The, Worked out end, well for me. The ending to that game could have been the dumbest ending I've ever seen in the history yes, of football. Yes, it could have been. But I do not it was like, with it was like Russell Henley on 18. But you know what? What? <laughs> <laughs> you know wow. what? You know what ending was not dumb? <laughs> that was the ending to the Sony no. Open, a.k.a. the Masters of Hawaii. And um, it went down to a one on one. Duke Fest, uh, Hideki Matsuyama and Russell Henley, and whoa boy at the fireworks. Whoa um, boy, whoa boy, whoa boy. Whoa boy. Who wants to set it up? You want to set it up, Nate, or I, I can't? Sure, sure. Set Nate it up, needs buddy. to set it up because he's he's been a silent fan that now is he's don't spoil he's it. Big, yeah, big fan. Now. Go ahead, go ahead, Nate. Duke, uh, duking it out all the way. I mean, Russell Henley comes out of the gate hot. Both of these guys play their absolute tails off. And I love a golf tournament where there's two guys in the final group and it's just them. Nope, everybody else is out of it. Like, I'd say on 15, it was a done deal. And then all of a sudden, it just turns to match play, right? Yes. So, you've got Russell Henley, Matsuyama. The cool thing about that is that you know Matsuyama's not talking to him, you know? Yeah. Like, there wouldn't be that much conversation anyway. But these guys, like, they, they really can't communicate. Correct. They come into 18. Hanley's got a one shot. Lead. Before you before you get do 18, we gotta go ahead and we gotta clarify this. If I'm not mistaken, when they made the turn, when they made the turn, Hideki Matsuyama was five shots down when they made yes. the turn. Because yes. Russell Henley was absolute bananas on the front. He shot 29 on the front. Five shots, five shots in the lead at the turn. Okay, Nate, pick it up, go. And Matsuyama just starts dropping birdies left and right. And Hanley wasn't even, like, making bogeys. 
No, Matsuyama was just pouring it in from everywhere, just making every putt that he stood over. Right. So they they come into 18. Matsuyama does a Ben slash Nate swing. I mean, comes out of his shoes. Kyle Berkshire, yeah. sore back, back swing. I know. I think I think Kyle Berkshire has actually a more control swing than what Matsuyama had Maybe in, so. regu- in <laughs> yeah. regulation. The in regulation. regulation swing. Henley hits it in the bunker. He's forced to to lay up. Mm-hmm. Matsuyama uh, drives the green. So Matsuyama, go ahead. He, he two putts for birdie. So he is in at 23 under. Henley hits it to 10, 12 feet. He thinks he makes it, and I thought he made it. I think everybody there thought that that 10-footer to win to birdie 18 was in. Burns the edge. Boom, we're going to a play. Hold, hold on, Nate, before you go to that. So I should, I, we should just let somebody else set it up if I don't get to. to <laughs> if I just keep getting interrupted. No, you just, you just, you just missed something. Don't be upset. Go back to Kroger. And so the, he had he had 212 in, and Matsuyama was, like, highly disappointed because if you remember that first putty, that eagle putty he had was about 95 feet. Yeah, he was way short. He left it way, he left it way short. It, and, uh, and so that's when, as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, Henley's got a chance here because he should have gotten a lot closer from 212. Right. Yes. Now I'll let you set it up because – as opposed to his second shot in the playoff, we'll it get was there. definitely not 212. Yeah, we'll get there. Absolutely. So, so Hanley's got the 10, 12 footer in regulation for Birdie to win. Burns the edge. They go back to the tee box. Hanley hits it in the exact same bunker as he did in regulation, which yep. almost makes it impossible for him to go forward into. Uh, and I, did, did Matthew Oma hit uh, three wood? Three off wood. Of that tee? Yes, he backed three off. Wood. He backed okay. off and three hit three wood yeah. this time. Uh, Henley hits first from the bunker. Good layup, right to a good number. And then Matsuyama's got 277. He's still got a little bit of the curve of the fairway to go around. And as soon as he hits it, he turns around. He has no, no idea. Dead he cannot the sun. see a thing. The Hawaiian sun is right in his face. Hawaiian 277 sun. high cut, lands 15 feet short, just checks a little bit. And trickles up to three feet. I'm sure you've seen the replay. I'm sure you've seen the pictures. I can't hit a 52 degree wedge from 80 yards that lands and releases like that. It is unbelievable. But he hit a three wood 277. And like, if you do the math, I mean, it carried with a cut, so that's that takes off even more distance. And it was not a, mm-hmm. it was not one of those penetrating cuts. It was like a pretty, I mean, would you say like at least 15, 15 yard. It was oh, a good little. Yeah. It had some movement. Yeah. yeah, a lot of movement to it, uh, and he carries it at least 260 yards, and then it just checks and, like you said, it rolls to. Th- I thought, I mean, the, the way shot tracer, in- it was 270 because they said it rolled out seven yards, so and he the, carried it. The, he carried it 270. The green breaks the way the ball the ball was going too. So like it was breaking yes. towards the hole. Like I honestly thought it could go in. Like there was a chance it could go in, but uh, and then obviously Russell had to hole out basically and he didn't um but that's when it got really awkward because henley blows it over the green i know he was trying to probably put it past the hole and suck it back and then he chips up so he's got a a birdie putt par putt excuse me par putt, a par putt that he misses and it's just it's painful to watch because matsuyama has to watch all of this with a three-foot eagle putt that's and they actually said that uh henley could have technically you can yes. concede in a playoff i didn't uh, know that I totally understand that you why he didn't, but you know he's in with both keys. <clears throat> Kyle, they asked because the announcers are saying that for some reason I don't know why they did this, but they <clears throat> asked the uh, tour official when they got on the tee, can they play out a turn if they both and agree to it? If they both agree to it, and the tour mm-hmm. official said no, but you can concede the hole. Wow. Yes. And yes. so they didn't know that. So it had I was been so called, upset like, that they I were, turned it off. They wrote. <laughs> <laughs> They were so they were aware. I mean, Hindley was and now at that point when you have gone through that much emotionally, that may have been the last thing going through his mind when he was standing over a bogey putt where he could have just picked it up and took, taken his hat off and you know shaken hands and moved on. Because I I really don't think Matsuyama was four putting from where he was. I just don't see that happening. It's just wild that you've got these both of these guys have playing the best golf of anybody in the field. Right, they're in a playoff. And on the first playoff hole, one of them makes a score half in half the amount of shots that the other one did. Yeah. 
Henley makes a six and Matt Tomlin makes a three. That is why that golf what, is so freaking weird. It is without really knowing it because he never my, saw it. This is my thing about the Henley thing. Obviously, these dudes are pros, so you can't second guess anything. But uh, I mean, I guess you can second guess it. And but I don't understand the second when he hit in the bunker was. I'm a big Russell Henley guy, by the way. So I was pulling it really yes, hard. For him. This pod's big Russell Henley. The guy, yeah. the the ball was a lot further back up against the lip. I would have liked to at least seen him try. I mean, I guess he was hitting first, so that was the thing. Is he you was didn't know first. you didn't know he was going to hit at the three feet, but like you knew he was going to hit <laughs> on the green. But I mean, but then again, Russell's one of the best wedge players in the game and one of the best putters in the game too. So. Birdie is definitely not out of question at all. And you don't know he's going to hit it th- th- to three feet. So I don't know. It's always easy to second guess things. But um, I would just- say Matt Strama sitting 277 out. You know, if Henley, if Henley tries to hit it out of the bunker and something goes wrong, he could take Birdie out of it completely. Yeah. Whereas in his mind, Matt Strama, I mean, Eagle, that Eagle was super impressive. Like at oh. best, Matt Strama's probably going to yeah. make a Birdie. Henley sets himself up to do the same thing and then go to the playoff hole again and, and maybe not hit it in the bunker. And then he's, you know, got a much better opportunity. But yeah, can he not hit a draw? He's just ice cold. It, that they say that's just. They say, and they said that hole has been rough on him. Not a comfortable, not a comfortable tee shot for him to have to hit, have to hit a draw. It's just not his, okay. it's just not his deal. And he even hit three wood to help him be able to turn it over and he just hit it. Straight through the fair. I mean, it's like right in the landing gear. If you go, if you hey, don't draw Nate, it enough, Nate and I get that. We understand that. We, <laughs> yeah. we Nate I'm and not, not completely comfortable in that it. situation either. Yeah, but I just, I, I just was curious. I get in regulation why you did it. You got a one shot <clears throat> lead. Yeah, you don't want to spray it anywhere. I get that. And, and bunker's not going to hurt you because you can still lay up. There's still an opportunity for birdie. Par at worst. Like you got to make the other guy birdie to tie you. I get that in regulation. But in the playoff, I don't know. I'm just thinking, let's go win this thing. Let's. He you know. hits up. He has honors on the first playoff hole too, so he doesn't yeah. get to Matt. I don't know if Matt Stroma went back and pulled the three wood, or if he had three he wood did. on his mind. He the did. Whole time. Pull he did. He goes back he, and pulls the three yeah. wood. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because yep. he knows that that's not. There's no an eagle is so. It almost it takes eagle out being in a fairway bunker from 270. It's just yeah, so improbable. Yep, yeah. absolutely. I was, I wanted, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I, but I was just wanting to think about this. That, I mean, obviously, under the circumstances, it's one of the more impressive golf shots that I've ever seen, uh, especially live. Um, the, the distance, the club, all that, all that good stuff. Um, the circumstances. Can you think of what's like your shot that you're most proud of, like in competition, in a bet? Like what's the shot you're the most oh, most proud of ever? I got that one. That that's the number one. 18 Auburn uh uh RTJ at Grand National link side. Hold on, let me think mean, about it. Okay, I got it. It's the one that's over the water. Tough hole. Um, very tough, tough second hole. shot. Second I'm shot's in, impossible. I'm in the bunker. On the I'm, on the hill? Yes. The I'm 210 out. I hit Holy a hybrid. I hit a hybrid to within about four feet and made the putt with a bet on the line. That's, and that by far is – that is by far the best shot. Google Earth ever. this. Y'all got to yes. Google Earth this. That If that if if that happened, which I don't – I mean, you just made that up. You, you would have had to have made that up really quick if that if you're lying. And that was actually – I mean, I believe you 100%. That is a <laughs> tough, tough golf shot. No, and no. Then, I've, tr- I've tried it. I've tried it because we play – you know, that's my home course. We play that yeah. course a lot. I have been in that bunker – easily 50 times in my career that's the only time i have reached the really? green and just happen to it's in your miss zone that bunker yeah. is in your miss. <laughs> i just i just happened to hit it within like four to four to five feet that, that is... one time but that was the shot that i will always remember as being the shot that's tiger woods canadian open-esque yeah yeah if yeah. you think about it if you think about it it's like that it's diff- that difficult and it was exactly. like nate's it was like nate's bet they they pressed on 18. I brought some clients down from uh agency that was in Atlanta and they came down and they pressed on 18. And the guy that I got I stuck with was not that not that great of a golfer. And I swear I think he was more excited than I was that I hit it that close because the those guys were thinking when both of us were in the bunker, we got this. Mm-hmm. Game yep. Oh over. yeah. Oh yeah. It's over. Yeah. And 
then made the putt too because they made me putt it. It was even though they had like I think they made bogey because they three putted. They were like still you three putt from there. I'm like uphill four feet. I'm not three putting from here. There's no chance. So that reminds yeah. me, Ben. I still got to pay you. I gotta get your, <laughs> I gotta get your Venmo when we get off. Sorry, we sure. get, we I digress. Should, should get, Nate, what's yours? Should get, we should give that out over Dad by Golf Pots so somebody else can Venmo me. There you go. In the <laughs> first uh, first member guest that I was in, shootout I was in, we got to the next last hole, which is par three at AUC. Tons of water. Lots of water everywhere. The first guy, there's four of us left, is going down to four to two, going into the last hole. First guy hits it like five feet, Charlie Cox. And he's he's won this thing like a thousand times. He's the guy to beat. The next two guys dunk it in the water. So there's a little bit more pressure because really, as long as I get on the green, that's it. Me and Charlie are both going to have birdie putts. These other two guys are going to be dropping. It's it's almost a guarantee that me and him are going to go. Uh, so those other two guys, by not hitting it on the green and hitting it in the water, created more pressure for me, honestly. I hit the shot. As soon as I make contact, I was like, okay, cool. It's it's headed the flag. It's definitely got enough, and I walk away. Not not to be like a showman, just because I was like, I don't want any more. There's a little show box. to it. There's a little, a little show. Bit, yeah. I've heard my club this. was <laughs> in my bag, and we were driving before the ball hit the green. And I yeah. called the was like, oh, yeah, walked it off, dude. Oh, you're so cool. You walked it <laughs> off, you freaking loser. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up that was a big. That. that was a big shot. That was a big shot. That's, that, hey, there's 50 people watching. Honorable mention, Nate. I'm going to give you an honorable mention for you. Okay, when we did the okay. shootout, when we did the shootout, and uh, we get to that same hole, and the you're going second, and the dude in front yes. of you shanks one 165 yards. Oh my! Perpendicular, gosh. perpendicular. The ball will never be found until Jesus comes back. It is so yes. far. It's so <laughs> far gone. And then Nate gets up and just skanks one across. Skanks yeah, one I across just like, the, yeah. Laps one across. I think it hit the green. And so by the bunker, like, I smoked it. It was as hard right, as I could. Just, I just, I just got to give it away. I got to give it away. Right, since, since Kyle's doing honorable mentions, Nate, I did chip in on Kyle, but he ended up putting birdie on top of me the very first time we ever played. On a, Where was that? When was at that? Par five at AU Club, the first, the par five that you guys did the challenge on. Oh. That's right. That's right. You chipped in for, for par, didn't you? For birdie. Because then birdie. you made birdie on top of me. Got it. Got it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kyle was I, mad. Like he got yeah. halfway there and he goes, are you kidding me? I, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a tough one, too. I remember it now. You're behind. It's that blazing downhill, and somehow it just tracked right in. Uh, mine is uh, – I was in – mine's actually a putt. But um, I was in uh, Andalusia in the uh, – where Ben grew up. Andalusia yeah. Country Club to a four-ball four ball tournament. Big four-ball tournament. Huge Calcutta. Like, the Calcutta is just absurd. Yes. We're on the very last hole. And it turns out, I didn't know this at the time, but it turns out this won, basically won the Calcutta. because the So, team, you're on 18? No, we started on five, so we ended on six, which was the the really hard road hole. Four. Green yep. as tiny as this computer screen. Yes. Uh, hit a good slopes, drive. Slopes back to front. Yep, hit a good drive, hit a wedge to right in the middle of the green, probably had about an eight-footer, and – jarred it absolutely mm. jarred it for birdie and it turns out the team that was in first bogeyed the hole right before us so that put us in the, that put us in first and we won everything we won first place won calcutta won it all it was it was awesome so nate what, just to explain this to you that hole it's a very tight fairway dog leg right it's a short hole um very tight long, fairway you don't hit a good dog teacher. dog leg right and the green's about the size of the suv you drive it's the and, smallest green. And it, I drive and a Lexus, by the way. And it's and it slopes. <laughs> yes, you do. And it slopes just like that. So if Kyle was above the hole, I guarantee you that was one of the fastest putts he's ever had. Oh, it was a little fast. It was left or right. It was. It was. It was oh, dreamy. you didn't. It was I know dreamy. we don't even. I know we don't want to talk about them on this pod, but I mean, you have a kind of a world famous make, Kyle. Do a yeah, truly you putting shootout. Yeah, you do. Was that not that? Oh yeah, biggest. yeah. We can I mean, talk it's not, about it wasn't. It wasn't like. I'll While say you're it. Playing, we, but we can talk about it. That that wasn't. It was a it was a putting contest in the Barstool Classic. I'm not gonna. Yep. It was uh, went to the Barstool Class, Classic last year, and I won the putting contest at uh, Chateau Alon. I had um. It's on their Twitter. Um. Yes. I'll retweet it one day from the Dad Bod, uh, account. Um. It was pretty cool. Uh. There was like was five impressive. of us. There was like went five viral. of us. Yeah, five of us, and luckily I was just happened to be going last. And it was like a downhill swinger. If you didn't make it, you missed it by 25 feet. 
and the first four guys missed it. I jarred it and walked it off. One one of yes, custom yes, spider did. and five hundred dollars. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> you want to tell you a way you can save five hundred dollars? You can save five hundred dollars. I might have to do the math really quick. Um, but uh, if you use your coupon code, uh, your twenty five percent off coupon code. Somebody do that math really quick. Two thousand. You need to put two thousand dollars of stuff yeah, in your if cart. You spend, and you get five hundred dollars off. If you buy two hundred dollars, two thousand, two thousand worth of Swanee's uh, gear from Swanee's.co and you use your coupon code dabod golf pod dash 25, you'll save $500. Uh, they're awesome. They got everything that you would, you could ever desire when it comes to golf fashion. And they got a new line coming out in March. So if you've been eyeing anything on the site, you better go ahead and get it now. Cause it's going to be gone soon to make room for the new stuff. Swanee's.co. The guys are awesome. Check them out. By the way, you're going to love the new stuff because we've seen a taste of it. Where the game A little starts. sample. Where, Where fashion starts. starts. Where the fashion starts. Cool. By the way, I'm calling you out publicly right now. You better share those shoes or I'm going to be really mad. Call me out publicly. I got some more bling yes. because I got some more yes. bling you shoes. Have to, you have to share <laughs> shoes with me and Nate. All, All right. right. We'll, start, we'll start sharing shoes. I got some All more right. Blaine Barber specials. Um, you owe me anyway. Because I've shared my, you sharing owe me dumbbells anyway. with Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be sharing sweat with Blaine. Anyway. All right. <laughs> All right, moving on, we uh, dropped another YouTube video, our second content piece. Um, we did an episode a while back, and we we sort of stuck to it. Um, it was a little bit different. Nate was like – I think the scenario was like your basic 500-yard par five, and then you pick three clubs, uh, and you can only play with those three clubs, and you got to try to make par. So me and Nate did it, and uh, neither one of us made par. Um, started off pretty good. I mean, we hit two pretty good shots. You started out – Fabulous. Yeah. Well, Nate, Nate was Nate was good too. He just picked <clears throat> the wrong club. I had 109 no, in no. for my third shot on a no, that's five. No, that's what I'm saying. I hold on. Hold on. The look, because I just watched it. I just watched it this morning. And the look that Nate gives the camera after the first tee ball, I was like, he doesn't like it. Like you, you were like, I, just, upset I thought I was going to kill somebody. No, it, it was that was a look of of fear. Oh, because because those guys were down there on the left. No, you did the I, guy on the. Gator. I thought I may be watching the yeah. the end of the video from prison. It was fear see, and relief, is what okay. it was. That was the see, look. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't see the ball once it got past about twenty five yards. You couldn't see the ball, and so the look on Nate's face. He turned around, looked at Cameron, and I was like, "What did he do? Did he shank? Like, where did it go?" And then when you're up there in the fairway, I was like, "What's he upset about?" No, it was literally there right over go. the dude's head. I mean, it okay. There's no that makes more sense. How he didn't hear it, yeah. how he didn't hear it whizzing by is just blows my mind. Cause I mean it was he you never hear, moved. You hear me, you hear me on the video. I mean it was he like, never moved because y'all had told me about ooh. that. And so I kept re-watching the video going, okay, let me see if I can find where this ball is. So I, yeah. Lori's like making fun of me because I'm standing up by the television because I throw it up on the TV. We got to get the shot tracer. I got to get the <laughs> shot tracer honed in. So I'm like standing up at the TV and I'm like, where is it? Where is it? That guy doesn't move. Like he doesn't know. He doesn't know. And Lori's like, <laughs> your daughters you? have to come down the stairs sometimes to get something from the fridge and be like, God, that is so weird. What, what is, is he doing? doing? What is, he's just, he's watched this, he's, doing. he's watched he this doing? kid with a dip in his mouth play this whole seven times. <laughs> yeah. I keep it, keep it in replay, like rewind it. And they're like, why are you rewinding? Are you like checking his stats? What are you rewinding it for? I'm like, I gotta, gotta check it out. So anyway, that, that's what can, that's why I was like, I don't understand why he's upset. So, okay. That so explains, hit, that explains more. He almost me. kills the guy and then he hits a bullet. I mean, a piercing bullet. It doesn't get five feet off the ground, but it roll, it hits and rolls all the way to right around a hundred yards. And then mm -hmm. I, I hit a really good drive for me, for my three wood. And, I fatted my three wood. I, I, you couldn't really tell, but I fatted it, and it started off way right. And I was like, oh, you hear me? Oh, boy. I thought I'd hit out of bounds, and that's going to be the end of it. But it Did just kind of – tree or – No, it kind of drew right inside the pine. It was hit that's, poorly. It was hit poorly. It was so you not just hit, hit you, you hit your, hit your little toe draw, a little fat toe draw. Yeah, that's exactly there. what it was. This is exactly okay. what it was. Squirted way right and kind of hooked back um, – Hooked back, just got barely got over the bunker. I honestly thought I was way further out than I was. Uh, then Nate was in way impossible, 100 yards with a nine iron um, to a, a green that you can't really, because of the nine iron, you can't really come in high. You can't come in high, yeah. and then yeah. you can't shoot it low into the green because you got the bunker on both sides and a very short little narrow area. So it was so a tough shot. 
<clears throat> so walk me through this because I didn't participate in this. I'm, I got I got some questions. Yeah. Since nobody else can ask y'all questions except when they reply to uh, the video on YouTube. I got yeah. some questions. Why did you pick the clubs you picked? Yeah. And um, why did y'all go with putter? Did y'all not think about belly in like a 56 or a 60 or something like that instead of taking so that way if you miss the green, which you're more than likely to do since y'all are playing with clubs that you're not used to hitting into a green with. Yeah. Why did you know did was that considered like walk yeah. me through the choices of your clubs? I'll go. I'll go first. So All I right. figured I could go. Now it was into the wind, so I ended up being a little bit shorter than I thought. But I think I thought I could go 250, 250 and have a little 50 to 60 yard wedge shot, which I had a 75 yard wedge shot. So that was um that was my thinking. And then pretty easy from I mean it should have been in theory pretty easy from there. So but I just chunked it. Kyle could afford to pick a wedge because he hits his three wood further than I do. And, and, and if he got in trouble in the bunker, he wouldn't get penalized because he'd have a 56 with him. I had to, I had to prepare myself for the fact that the, the three wood off the tee or the following three wood may not be, you know, smoke showed. And I didn't want to leave myself where I've got 150 with a wedge and I just absolutely can't reach. So I wanted the opposite to happen to where, you know, I ended up having the nine iron from 109, but if I had hit one of those other three was not as good and I'd had to hit it, you know, 140, 150, I felt comfortable with that club. Also, if I had gotten in the bunker or around the green, I still felt like I could have saved myself with a nine iron versus something else. And as far as the putter goes, you know, there was a good chance that the putt was going to be for par that you, yeah, you know, yeah no, I completely, no, I agree with putting. that. And, uh, and it just, you know, outside of six feet, don't feel that good with a uh, – with, you know, as we've seen Kyle with a, with a five, iron. Know, five iron. What would you have been – what would you have taken, Ben? Two, 553 uh, from the t- or 535 from the tip. Yeah, and we tipped it out, which we always do. Yeah, when you said tip it out, like that would have made me think – because I've, t- I've told you all that before that I'm comfortable with the driver, even though that has not shown in the last few times we've played. Um, where I probably would have definitely hit driver because I would have probably gone driver off the deck again um, and probably would have gone driver like eight or nine iron and like 60 and left a putter in the bag because I feel comfortable oh. belly in a putter and like two putting from wherever I was. So I okay. don't, I, I wouldn't, I probably would have bellied the, bellied the 60 degree wedge. Dry, so driver, eight iron. So driver, driver, like driver, driver, and had yeah. the eight or nine iron like Nate did for precaution in case I topped it or, you know, in case I did mm-hmm. something stupid with the driver off the deck that I'd have a, another club in hand to be able to get to the green and then just worried getting up near the green on that third shot to to be able to take that 60 and try to stick it close and make okay, a well, We're going to let you it. try it. We're going to let you I just try think it putting is hard enough with a putter. Unless it's like a one club challenge. No, 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 it, the putter no, without, it is that you know, the, 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 the three wedge. guys, the, the three guys that I play with, they make fun of me all the time. Cause they, they actually, they got a nickname for me. They call me one club Jimmy. Cause I'll leave my putter in the bag. Just take my wedge and I'll putt with my wedge. And so I, I'm you just hope that they're going to give it to you. Cause you don't have your putter. With no, you. no, I've had, they've made me putt it just cause there's money on the line. I just have, that's just, that's, that's a shot. Like, Kyle said, going back to Angles Your Country Club days, I told you how it was just – it was really flat around the greens. I've just always been pretty comfortable with belly and a putter and and trying to make a putt from from a distance side. So well, We're going to when, – when we go play again, you have to do that on four. You, get, you can play your own ball, but you got to do – you got to do a three-club challenge. I can do that. Driver, driver. I want to see driver, driver, eight iron, 60, just like you said. Yeah, I love it. And then, and then it. as JJ saw, I'm not only okay belly and a putter, I'm okay with a flop shot with that or with that 60 degree wedge. Because I, I on maybe one day we'll put all of our JJ. clubs on so upset with me. paper yeah. in a hat and then pull three out of the hat and play like that. Now that would be cool. That would be cool. Well, I've said before because we all have different specs. I've said before, draw them out of the hat and have to hit the other person's clubs. No, I don't want that. You guys, you guys have nice clubs. I still square. Away. I <laughs> yeah, like yours. We all have nice. Tricks. We all have nice clubs. Yeah, I'm just saying I, it's not like you know. It's just the specs are different on all of them. That would be that would be fun. It's not like pulling out of Blaine's bag, you know. That's just like ooh. <laughs> yeah, gross. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Found that butter knife. I'm like, uh oh. Are you taking? Are you taking shots? Hey, dude, I'm gonna tell you what. 
Those what? those blades we played with, y'all see that video coming up soon. Those blades we played with, man, when you hit those things in in the in the face, they feel good. No, they do. Lie. They but feel hitting so them in the good. face. It hit them in the face. You're thinking about cool. something, Nate. Well, I just I've I've had something I want to talk about. Oh, oh, okay. And then we yeah. kind of moved past. We did. We did kind of move past it. Let's circle back really quick. Let's go ahead and circle back. I want to make sure we get this in. But I need to be able to say this fully, and yep. then let the let the conversation commence. Got it. Okay. Say it. And I and I, so I I am guilty of this. I'm calling myself out. When Matsuyama won the Masters last year, I was not rooting for him. W- was rooting against him solely for the purpose that I didn't like the fact that he didn't speak English and that the whole interpreter thing, it took away from all the cool interviews afterwards. And then he won and there was the caddy bow and the more, and I love the masters a ton as much as anything in the golf world. And I couldn't help but respect him. And all of a sudden I started following him. He started playing really well. And then he became like impossible to root for. So much so that even though Russell Henley like literally lives like down the street from us, I couldn't help but root for Hideki this weekend. And I think a lot of us, and I'll just call us out Americans, we only love Americans. We love yeah. watching Americans win golf. We That's won't amazing. watch movies that are in other languages because we don't like reading subtitles, even though we might put subtitles on for an English movie. So I am, I'm calling myself out. I'm calling out people across the world. Number one, start rooting for Hideki Matsurama because he's just about my favorite player in the world now. Second of all, go watch a movie that's in another language because you are missing out on some of the best films in the world. This has nothing to do with golf. I just watched a movie the other day that was uh, French. It was awesome. It's called The Wolf's Call. It's about submarines and stuff. I honestly started off thinking that it uh, was just the beginning was in French because it was on the French submarine. And then 10 minutes in, I was like, oh, no, this is. Oh, we're in here for the long I'm in, But this is, this is really cool. I'm going to watch it. I'm with already you. not wanting to just... see that movie. What's that? I'm already not wanting to watch that movie. <laughs> so I just, you know, and I'm guilty <laughs> of it. But uh, we have to be better. Are you ready? You ready for you ready for one of our takes now on that? Absolutely, absolutely. There is no chance I'm pulling for anybody other than American in the Masters or the U.S. Open. It's just not happening. You can forget it, mark it down. I don't. What about the Sony Open? What about the Sony Open? The Sony Open, yeah. I I had Sony is not an American company. Listen, that (laughs) was that was the Hawaiian Masters, and but that (laughs) technically that's not on that's, that's not on the continental U.S. soil, so. Uh, but we're Henley guys. So with him being right down the road, I was pulling for Russell Henley, yeah. but I don't mind Matsuyama winning, but the masters and us open, forget about it. It's uh, uh-uh. I want an take, American winning those. Okay. Here's my take, now, here's my and, take and I, real quick. That, that's two other majors that they get that, that the Europeans or everybody, but Sabatini, the, what is, what is True. Sabatini? What is he now? What is his nationality? Czechoslovakian or something. Yeah. And that, Czech. That, that's who can't win any tournaments. The checks, nope, out. Holy crap! <laughs> Holy cow! All right. Well, here's my deal. Since I've started doing, since we started, since we started doing <laughs> this, this podcast, I have opened my mind to the world that's out there of golf. I was, I'm sort of had a, had a bend mindset. Uh, y'all know I love Rory McIlroy, uh, but. Hideki Masayama is electric to watch. He is absolutely electric to watch. Um, he has the flair about him. He has the, uh, you know, he. You never know if he hit a good shot or not. Mm-hmm. He he uh, at the Zozo when he hit that he hit the um, three wood in there tight uh, on eighteen. He did the whole posing on it and walking it in. Um, Hideki is a fun, fun golfer to watch. And I'm, no, yeah, I agree. I'm sort of, I'm sort of on Nate's side where I'm coming around. I wouldn't say he's my favorite golfer, but I've definitely, I've definitely opened my horizons. Now, Ryder Cup, I'm going to be America. But when it comes to, yeah. when it comes to majors and stuff like that, the only thing I really care about is like, as long as it's somebody I don't hate, that's pretty much it. And I, there I are like some it. exceptions. Rory winning the Masters. He's deserving of it. Have zero okay. problem with that. But I'm just saying, it's not that I'm anti. I'm just pulling for an American at the Masters in the U.S. Open. That's what I'm okay. doing. Okay. 
I mean, I get it. There's a lot of people like that, and I, I was like that for, for not for a, this for, week, not for this weekend. I was just pulling for Henley because we're Henley fans. That's why I was pulling for him. If if Henley's not in that final group, and it's Matsuyama versus Seamus Kevin, Power, <laughs> yeah, that dude was on fire there for he's got a great name by the way, Seamus yes. Power. That's yeah. an awesome name. Uh, but yeah, I'm pulling for Matsuyama. All but and honestly. What Nate said, that brought up a good point. I I like Matsuyama. I actually liked him when uh, what, the Zozo Championship, when they did the bit with he and Tiger and Rory and one other person yeah, where he was trying to teach them how to speak Japanese and they were failing at it and they were trying to teach him how to speak English and he actually came up with some one-liners that were absolutely – Fantastic. I have to go back. I'm, I think I missed that. I'll have to go back and look at that. That is that's that's when I became a fan because I was like, wait a minute, he's funny. He's a yeah. funny guy. Like he needs to try to speak he more to English talk more. because he's yeah, he's funny. But he I, I get it. Out of, he does that though, out of respect for the English language. He says he doesn't want to butcher it, and that's why he does not do it. And I do respect that. Do you guys remember in Karate Kid where they're trying to get the girl in down the floor? And they say that she's the interpreter because Mr. Miyagi can't speak yeah. English and she has to be there and, and all the yes. stuff. And then he like the guy behind the table was like, Oh, thank you. And he's like, Welcome. You're and welcome. Walks in. <laughs> yeah. That's like at the he's using that's a, I was using a translator the whole interview after the tournament. And then they say, you know, congratulations, well done. He says, Thanks at the end. <laughs> Just immediately responds in perfect English. Yeah, exactly. It's great. Exactly. But I would say there's 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 like five guys. That if they're in the final group with Matsurama at the Masters this year, I'll be rooting for them instead of Matsurama. Otherwise, Kepka, get buried. Yeah. Uh, Bryson, faced. get buried. Uh, Wrecked. Yeah. I would say no, Spieth, no, you, I, you, I would have to root for Spieth. Yeah. You you bring uh, up a good point, Nate. Maybe I should maybe I should clarify that. Is there some Americans if they're going head to head against Matsuyama? No chance I'm pulling for them. Yeah. Yeah. Patrick Gooch, Reed. Obviously, I have to pull for Gooch. Yeah. Patrick yeah. Reed. Patrick Pat Reed, Prick, I hope Pat Prick I Reed. hope Matsuyama hits one off a tree and hits Patrick Reed. I might I might actually pull for Sabatini over Patrick Reed. <laughs> That's Aren't blasphemous. they kind of like the same? <laughs> they, they really are. Yeah. They're both Water. just like little greasy Fat, little Sa just Sabat Sabatini is the European version of Fat Prick Reed. How okay, this is kind of changing subjects, but how much time does Luke Lucas Glover's T five buy him? <laughs> what to live? Oh. To at least, at least survive the evening. I mean, till um, Thursday when he teases up again. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. exactly. I mean, is she is she yelling at him on the practice tee when he's out there? Oh man, how do you play? That's a minute. whenever. That's the kind of pressure that I just have, want no part of. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. No, I don't want any part of that. Callan standing back there on the behind you, like yell, like with a whip in hand, like yelling at. What you? if Caleb was like, "Hey, you know that pressure's at eight and eight, and the kids have to eat tonight." <laughs> Yeah, you press it and then you hit that shot, you big loser. Really? Yeah, love it, love it. No, Lucas Glover still pulling for you, but T five finish. That's that's pretty good. I can't wait. I've got a Lucas Glover job in the alternate reality. I won't share it now, but I've I've, I've got one. <laughs> All right, I'm we may ready. have to do. The, we may have to the, do another one of those pretty quick. The one time I took Lori to play golf, I think the first couple of tee balls I hit, and Nate, you can appreciate this. Hit like dead right, like in the woods. One of those where I. You know, instead of playing a cut, I played a push cut and mm. hit it in the woods. And and, well. and she just – she, like, looks at me. She's like, why do you keep hitting it over there? I'm like, yep, you're done. Not coming back. That's it. Done. I'm – You did it. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Love it. So, this coming up week, we got the American Express. Our boy, Scott Stallings, is making yes. his – Scotty. His 2022 tour debut. debut. Or, not debut. I guess it is for 2022. He played – It is, Yeah. He played a few tournaments on the back back half, uh, the first part on the back half of the year from last year. So yeah, those don't count. Yeah, this not is the our, 2020, not in our world twenty twenty two year. So we're definitely going to be paying attention to him. Um, we've had a couple of our buds. Um, I'm going to pull up the scoreboard really quick. They're in the the Corn Ferry Tour is weird. So like the first Corn Ferry Tour event started on Sunday, which was kind of kind of crazy. Um, but we've had a couple of guys in there. Um, I think Andrew Kozan. Um, he he snuck in, made the cut. That's huge. His first cut he made. Um, uh, you know, Tom Lovelady, former tour pro, former PGA tour guy. He's he made the cut. Uh, several guys. Um, they're starting off this year in the Bahamas, and then next next week, Blaine Blaine kicks off next week. Uh, so 
it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun season. Every all the fun stuff starting to get underway, and we're here for all of it. Uh, we'll be yeah. back again tomorrow yeah. for a Would You Rather Wednesday. Yes. Get fired Nate, up. Get Nate, fired up. Nate's Nate comes work. with it every single time. He comes with the heat. No pressure, Nate. He will never let us down. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll have some uh, preview, uh, maybe preview the first round after the first – a review after the first round of the American Express – uh, on Friday, maybe have a friendship Friday. I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. But uh, thanks for listening. Uh, it's good Scott to be... Stallings to chime in. Yeah, uh, may from... have to get a first round. <laughs> yeah, I bet that'll work. He did text me. He did text me to confirm that he's in. So that's good. Good deal. Nice. Scott, uh, one of the best shows we've ever had, by the way, Scott Stallings. So um, y'all uh, check us out the rest of the week. Uh, this has been episode 125 of the Dad Bod Golf Pod, and we are always, always. stroking. <laughs>